First of all, the fine print here is that this is what I would do if I was going to start up, do a startup right now. This is not necessarily what you should do, but, um, but you should try to take that and extrapolate it. I'm a, I have a CS degree. I'm a software guy. Not all of you are software. This is going to be a little software uh, slanted. But uh, I think it's a lot more helpful to get a specific example that you can figure out if that applies to you or not versus trying to uh, give you advice that would work for everybody. So this is what I would do. So first thing is I would pick a problem that I actually have. Uh, doing a startup is really, really hard. And you've got to be really passionate about what you're doing for a lot of different reasons. It's going to be a lot of long nights and a lot of uh, ups and downs. And I find it's, it's much easier to be passionate about something that affects me personally and something I'm going to be able to use is going to affect my, my own life. Uh, I would find a co-founder. Uh, same kind of theme. Doing a startup's really hard. And it's a lot easier if you've got somebody else there with you. Somebody else that's going through the same things you are and that you can lean on and that uh, knows what you're going through. And that's really kind of like your first sales job is to go sell your co-founder and get them to, uh, to join up with you. I would raise as little money as possible. Fundraising totally sucks. It is not fun. Nobody thinks it's fun, especially the first time you go do it, maybe when you're a huge success or something. But it's not fun, and actually it's sometimes a bad influence. And so I think I would really try to raise as little money as possible. It's always going to seem like the more money I have, this would just be easy. It's usually not true. Usually that's just going to let you run really fast in the wrong direction. Um, one way to do that is to get your customers to pay in advance. This is a really good influence, and, and it can, it's way easier to do than most startups believe. And so you just, you know, you just ask them to pay you. And if they, you're really solving a problem that's valuable, that they really want, they will pay you in advance, and they'll give you some runway to go do that. They'll give you a little bit of leeway. Um, and another great trick is just ask your customers to double what they're paying you. I just did that with another startup that I'm working with, and they suddenly doubled their revenue. Um, it, was, it was an amazing trick. Um, I would have very few secrets. I would talk to as many people as I can about my startup. Um, this doesn't mean that you, if you have something that you're going to patent, you should disclose that. There are, you, know, you might have some things that you don't talk about. But in general, I would talk to as many people as I can because I find that uh, kind of like social media, um, the, the, the benefits of you know, the unexpected things that are going to come back at you far outweigh the negative things that might happen from somebody trying to steal your idea or something like that. I would definitely build mobile first and, and focus on something that's mobile. Um, you know. I, Again, this is assuming that I could do anything I wanted to do, so I get to pick where I'm going to start. I would pick mobile because that's where all the growth is. It's like a rising tide kind of thing. It's going to be easier to get people to work on it. It's going to be easier to get press about it. It's going to be easier to get investors to invest in it. It's going to be easier to get people to adopt it. So, um, so I would focus on something mobile if I could pick anything in the world. I wouldn't buy any servers. Hopefully, I don't have to explain that here. Um, and uh, I would build it on Ruby on Rails. Uh, there's lots of ways to get to the top of the mountain. There's lots of programming languages you could use. You could build a website probably in any different language, and they probably could all do it well um, if you did it the right way. But I'd pick Ruby on Rails. And it's not really just about the way Ruby on Rails works and that it lets you do things really quickly uh, and, and fast, but it's actually more about the types of programmers that go and learn Ruby on Rails. And I find they're really entrepreneurial, and they're the kind of people I want in a startup.